This happened to me during a business trip that I took last year for work. I arrived at the hotel and picked up my key to the room, which my company had paid for. It was a nice looking hotel on the inside, though a bit smaller than most other hotels. There were maybe 30 to 40 rooms total and only three stories. My room was on the top floor, so I took the elevator up and started making my way down the hallway. I put my bags down by the door and reached into my pocket for the room key. But just as I did that, the neighboring room's door opens and a man steps into the hall. He greeted me, mentioning that he was my neighbor, and held his hand out, gesturing for a handshake. I confusingly shook it and told him my name, then started making my way into the room. As I walked in, I noticed that he went back into his room as well and shut the door. I thought it was strange that someone would come out of their temporary hotel room just to greet me as their temporary neighbor, but some people are just like that, I guess. I unpacked my small suitcase and duffel bag, then laid on the bed and turned on the TV. It was pretty late already and I was tired from the flight, so I planned on going to bed early that night. I took a quick shower, then turned off all the lights. I laid there trying to sleep for almost 20 minutes before hearing the neighbor's door creak open, followed by seeing their shadow walk by my door, but they stopped just before they passed my room. Through the sliver of light under the door, I could see their shadow get closer for a second before backing away and continuing down the hall. This obviously creeped me out, so I got up and made sure that all the locks were secured on the door, then went back to bed. The next day I went to meet my coworkers at a company-owned building where we attended a presentation and had dinner. I didn't get back to the hotel until 10 p.m. And I was really exhausted. I tossed my work bag on the bed and then got in the shower. I was in there for maybe 10 minutes when, through the water splashing, I heard the distinct beep sound of the electronic door lock unlocking. I knew it was too late for it to be the cleaning services, so my mind instantly jumped to the strange man staying in the room next to mine. But I didn't know how he could possibly have a key card that could unlock my door. Not knowing what to do, I stood there silently as I listened to the door slowly open and then closed, followed by footsteps walking past the bathroom door with the shower running. I knew that they had to know that I was in there, which terrified me even more. I tried to quietly step out of the shower as to not alarm them. Then I quietly put on a pair of pants that I had laying on the ground, making sure to lock it. I leaned my ear up against the bathroom door and listened. I could hear a faint noise sounding like someone was searching through one of my bags. Of course I wanted to confront them, but for all I knew, they could have a gun or a knife. In the moment, I really just felt helpless and frozen in fear. I had no idea what this guy could want from me, but soon the room went silent. While I didn't have my phone with me, I figured my best bet was to call for help. At the very least, it would hopefully get the guy to run away. I took a deep breath, then started banging on the bathroom door, yelling for help as loud as I could. I could hear the man's frantic footsteps run past the door and back into the hallway. I quickly got out and closed the front door, locking it shut, then ran to the nightstand to get my phone and dialed 911 with my shaky hands. Once they were on their way, I called the front desk to let them know as well. Of course, by the time they got here, the man was already gone, but thankfully the police found him in his car a few hours later. I'm not sure if he even got any jail time for his actions though, because they couldn't prove his motive to be harmful. I honestly think he was trying to kidnap me or something though, as I don't know any other reason why he would go into the room when he knew that I was in there. I worked as a security guard at a large hotel in Las Vegas during my late 20s. It paid way better than pretty much any other job nearby that I was actually qualified for, but the most annoying part about it was the scheduling and the staff. At the time, the building was having trouble with the lack of staff to cover shifts, so my schedule would be mornings, evenings, or overnight, all randomly throughout the week. It made it really hard to even sleep sometimes, but again, I liked the money. Anyways, I was working a late evening shift this night and was at the front desk talking to two of my coworkers. It was around 11 and my shift ended at 12, so we were just passing the time. In the middle of our conversation, the phone rang on the desk that I was leaning on checking the number. It was from one of the rooms in the hotel, so I picked it up and asked how I could help them. 
A man spoke, saying that there was something going on in one of the rooms down the hall and that he was really worried about it. I asked him what he meant and he frantically responded, telling me to come up quick because he was getting really nervous. I checked the room number on the phone, then told him I would send security up as soon as possible. Of course, though I was just referring to myself when I put the phone down. I quickly explained the strange nature of the call to my coworkers, then headed to the elevators and went to the mid-level floor where the caller's room was located. Walking down the hallway, there was a strange sense of absolute silence. I expected to hear whatever the caller was talking about, but there were no loud noises coming from anywhere on the floor. I also kind of expected the caller to have been standing by their door waiting for me or something, but the door was closed. I knocked on the door loudly announcing that it was hotel security. I didn't hear any movement or sounds coming from the room at all, and after a minute of no answer, I walked down to the end of the hallway, listening intently for anything unusual, then continued back to the door, knocking again. A few moments later, though, the room behind me opened their door I said yes and asked if they knew anything about a strange noise or the caller from the room, to which they replied that they had heard loud noises traveling through the hallway a few minutes ago, but were unsure what it was. From their voice and facial expressions, they seemed really terrified. At this point, I was already starting to get really nervous, but things only got stranger. I grabbed my walkie and radioed down to the front desk, asking them to call the room again and let me know if they answered. After a little bit, they replied that nobody answered. I stood there for a moment trying to think of what to do before radioing back down to them. I told them to check who was staying in the room. After waiting for what felt like forever, they finally got back to me, saying that nobody had the room booked for tonight. Even more confused. I took out my security key card and opened the door. Since nobody was supposed to be there, the room looked clean and unused as far as I could tell. I searched every corner and found basically nothing. But then I walked over to the phone, I turned it over and got the serial number on it. Then I went back down to the lobby where my desk was, and I checked the security records for timestamps of calls that had been made from that room. Sure enough. There was a record of an active call having been made from this room to the front desk, the one that I had answered about 15 minutes ago. Obviously the hotel didn't record the calls or anything, so all I was able to confirm was that someone was in that vacant room without permission. This ended up becoming a bigger investigation over the coming days, as the next morning one of the guests staying in a room on that same floor was reported missing by a family member that was staying in a separate room. The security footage of all the entrances and exits were reviewed, and the missing person was last seen leaving the hotel alone a couple hours prior to the call that I had received. It's still unclear if the two incidents were connected or not, but it's definitely a really strange situation. I don't know how the caller got access to that phone or who they were, but personally I believe that the reason they called seemed to add up with someone getting forcefully kidnapped. Based on their brief description, the person behind the mystery call was never identified, and as of right now, the missing person still has not been found. My family would take yearly vacations to a different hotel and resort every summer. It would always be me, my wife and my two little boys. For the most part, we would spend all of our time at the resort rather than going out and visiting other places. It made it cheaper since we didn't need to rent a car, and it was just relaxing to stay at a nice place and get away from everyday life. Of course, when we first arrived in the morning, we all unpacked and the kids immediately wanted to go to the water park. My wife and I sat on the chairs around the pool while the boys went off and played with the other kids at the water park that was right next to the pool. We sat there enjoying the sun for about two hours before we both decided we should get back to our room so we could get ready to go out for dinner. I got up and began walking around the water park looking for the boys, and after a few minutes I was able to find Sam, the older of the two, and asked him where Alan was. I changed both of their names for privacy reasons. Sam said that Alan was playing with another kid on the other side of the park. I told Sam we were leaving and to run back to mom while I went to find Alan. I was searching, walking around like an idiot for probably 10 minutes, starting to get nervous. When I finally saw him, he was in the back corner where a few chairs were set up and was talking to a small boy that looked about his age. Sitting in the chairs next to him was a couple seeming to be the boy's parents. 
I walked up and briefly introduced myself, but they didn't respond. Aside from giving me a slight smile, there was an awkward couple of seconds of silence. Then I told Alan that we were leaving for dinner and led him back to the hotel. I asked him about who his new friend was, and he said he was playing with him at the water park, but that was pretty much it. Alan was a pretty talkative kid, so it was nothing out of the ordinary. But then he told me something strange. He said that the boy introduced him to his parents, who then invited him for dinner tonight. I found it really strange that someone would invite a young boy to dinner without even talking to the boy's parents. I told my wife as soon as we got up to the room, and she was also really worried about it. We ended up going somewhere quick for dinner and got back to the hotel around 5. The kids both seemed pretty exhausted, so we were ready to just relax for the rest of the night. We got in the elevator and made our way up to our floor. But as the elevator doors opened, Alan's new friend and his mother were standing there as if they were waiting for the elevator to go down. As soon as we got out, the mother looked at me with a short smile and asked if Alan could join them for dinner tonight. I briefly looked at my wife, who seemed just as confused and concerned as I was. Then I looked back at the lady. We already had dinner tonight, but maybe we can work something out for tomorrow. Her smile faded as she turned and walked down the opposite hallway I assumed to their room. I knew both me and my wife thought the same thing that they were creepily waiting for us by the elevator the whole time just to ask about dinner. When we got inside our room, we pulled Alan aside and strictly told him to not go near that family without one of us with him. He seemed a bit upset about it, but he agreed. I also pulled Sam aside separately and made sure he knew of the situation and that I wanted him to look after his little brother if ever we weren't around. We all took turns showering, then relaxed on the bed and couch for the rest of the night. I was pretty annoyed at how the vacation was going, already having to be stressed out for my child's safety, but I assured myself it would be better tomorrow. Eventually, we all got ready for bed and turned out the lights. There were two beds in the room, one that my wife and I slept on and the other for the two boys to share. A few hours into the night, I was shaken awake. I jolted up as I guess I was pretty on edge and I saw Sam next to me, still shaking my arm. You okay, bud? Sam responded quietly, whispering to me that Alan was talking to someone at the door. I immediately jumped out of bed and turned the corner leading to the front door. From the short glimpse I got before yelling at him, I could tell he was in the process of figuring out how to unlock the door, and I could hear a faint voice on the other side. I sprinted towards him, screaming for him to back away from the door. Alan jumped back, frightened by the volume of my voice. I slammed against the door, hearing footsteps sprinting down the hall as I finished unlocking the door and swung it open. I know I should have just stayed in the room and called for help, but I was in such a rage that all I wanted was to confront the creep. Entering the hallway, I saw a quick figure of a man turn the corner down the hall towards the elevators. I tried to catch up, but once I turned the corner, there was no sight of him. He wouldn't have had time to take the elevator, so I knew he was staying in a room on that floor. After looking around for a few minutes, I ran back to our room and met my wife, who was already awake due to the chaos of the situation. I told her to lock the door as I was going to go to the front desk to inform them of the incident. By the time I got down to the lobby, my adrenaline was starting to fade out, and I was trying to calm myself down so I could explain what happened. There was a young woman at the counter that I talked to, and I could tell she had never dealt with a situation like this. She called a security guard over to talk to me, as well as her manager. After a few minutes of discussion, though, it was pretty clear that they couldn't do much about it. They had no security cameras in the hallways, only on the entrances and exits. I didn't have any proof nor description of the man at the door or his relation to the parents who asked about dinner. Obviously, I assumed it was the f felt like I knew for sure the intention of the creepy parents, I couldn't really prove it. In short, the best they could do was give a refund for the remaining days, so we had to move to a different resort 30 minutes away. It's a really terrible feeling as a parent to know that there was someone likely trying to kidnap your child, and yet there is nothing anyone can do about it. I hate knowing that those creepy parents are probably out somewhere right now trying to get unknowing children into some weird trap of theirs.
those people deserve to rot in prison, and I hope that me sharing this experience can inform other parents of the true dangers and hopefully help save their children from these horrible people. What freaks me out the most is the possibility of the boy that was with them being someone else's missing child who they now use to lure another innocent children.